like after you get out of the train station and here you can either get a cab or an uber to make it to your tasting um, the cabs only take cash um, so we are getting an uber for one day of tasting in champagne we are only going to two big houses i think if you are planning on doing a small houses maybe you can do three but with big houses you can only do two tastings because there's just going to be a long tour of the area first one and we are almost there here's the first one a few things to know is that you have to make all your reservations in advance um, because it's impossible to find a booking the day of our first reservation is at Veuf Clique and um, I think I booked it a couple months in advance they start tasting pretty early in the day it is 9 40 now and we're headed to our first one Veuf Clique You have 60 million bottles of champagne downstairs. So <laughs> after that, just a welcome to our cellar. So, Philippe Picot, to be recognized, just uh, they had a very secret marriage in the cellar, it was a very romantic one. Unfortunately, the marriage was a very short one because uh, Francois Clicquot, few years later, the for the first time around the 70s, more or less, it works 24 hours on 24 hours, seven days on seven days. Inside, we can put 500 bottles of champagne, and thanks to this machine, we passed from uh, seven weeks with the riddling by hand to seven days, so you can see that uh, we earn a lot of time <coughs> thanks to the zero palette. We also ask to our cellar master if you have any difference in the taste between a bottle riddle by hand, all the bottles, each for us. So you can see it's exactly like the riddling by hand. Mm -hmm. For this reason, today we use this machine.
big. So you can try something in which each people has four glass. I guess you want to see if you're a vintage or not. If you're here, it means you're a vintage. Otherwise, you didn't quite make it. This is the last one, and I think they're going to add more as they come up with more vintages, but 2012 is the last one. We are now done with our champagne tasting at Vauve and took a cab to take us to Epernay. And the champagne houses are kind of equally distributed between champagne, uh, in between Reims um, and Epernay. They're about 26 to 30 minutes apart. So if you do any tastings in Epernay, you kind of want to make sure you have enough time between the two to be able to actually make it to the second one. The second one we're going to is intoxicated and tired as we make our way through the streets to make it to Epernay. To go to Huawei for tasting. We are almost eight minutes away from making it to our next wine tasting. As you can see here, there are fields and fields of vineyards in here as well. And um, yeah, in about eight minutes, we'll get to the Avenue de Champagne, which is like the street of Champagne. And from there, um, the Moe Champagne House is actually right on that street. Which I'm sure so we are here, the second one. To just give you a timeline, we started our first champagne tasting at 9.40. By noon, we were done. We had a really quick bite. And this is the second champagne tasting. This one, again, is in Epernay. Um, and the street it's on is called the Avenue de Champagne, which is like the Avenue of Champagne, basically. This one is a... Moet is a super big and much, much nicer one. It seems like at least on the outside. Super excited to go on the inside. Obviously not a perfect day, it rains, but who cares? We're gonna be doing a lot of champagne taste. And here's the inside. So I'm just gonna walk in a little bit, but we have our tasting in about 10 minutes. This one is just like a lot more commercialized, I feel like. And it just looks, looks so much nicer, even though the was also a super, super nice one. But this one, at least, like first walking in, just feels so much more made for. The marketing is so much better, at least, it feels like. And look what we have here. It's a barrel coming from Portugal yeah, that was uh, filled with a pot. So I guess Napoleon stole it and uh, <laughs> made a deal.
And this concludes our one day excursion to Champagne region. Uh, Moet was the last one and we are headed back to Paris. We have to get on a train in about an hour and it is half an hour ride before we get to the train station. So we're about to get on an Uber. But before we go back, this is basically the main street in Epernay which is called the Avenue of uh, Champagne. And it has all the very famous Champagne houses built around it. And this is basically what it looks like. It looks pretty nice. And it was built hundreds of years ago. This is the train station from Rennes to uh, Paris. And we are about to get on the train. Um, they announced the the platform for the train about 20 minutes to it which is actually pretty nice because that's not usually the norm in Italy but it's about 20 minutes to the departure time and we are about to get on the train so on each wagon you will see a number which says voiture which means the wagon or the car number and also where it is headed it is headed to Paris and the voiture or the wagon number is 12 which is us. This is the train. This is what the seats look like. This is the first class section. The seats are pretty comfortable. Most of them are facing one direction. There are two seats that are facing each other in this section. I'll show you the numbers. It's like 51 and 52. And then there are four other seats that are facing each other, but the rest of them are all facing just one way. This is what the train ride feels like. It goes through the countryside and the train is exceptionally quiet. Like you don't hear anything. And here they come checking the tickets. We made it back to Paris. It was a long day but a fun day. Um, this station is called Gare de Lift, which basically translates to the East, Eastern Station. And I think the trains for Champagne all leave from here. 